Carbohydrate is the major food element that we consume. Most of the carbohydrate source provide glucose through digestion. Our body uses this glucose and produces ATP with a series of reactions. Combinedly, these reactions are known as glycolysis. So, let's talk about glycolysis and this is Nahidasan from Team Kalosambidi. In aerobic glycolysis, the glucose is converted to pyruvate and in anaerobic glycolysis, the glucose is converted into lactate. Here, the rate limiting enzyme is phosphofructokinase. The ATP production in aerobic state, 8 ATP is produced per glucose and in anaerobic state, 2 ATP is produced. We will calculate this ATP production later. Now we will see the steps of glycolysis. At first, glucose produces glucose 6 phosphate with presence of hexokinase or glucokinase and magnesium ion. And here ATP is converted to ADP. In next step, glucose 6 phosphate produces fructose 6-phosphate with presence of phosphoglucoisomerase. Next, breaking this ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate produces fructose 1,6-bisphosphate with presence of phosphofructokinase. Now, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetylphosphate is produced from fructose 1,6-bisphosphate with the presence of aldose enzyme. With the presence of dehydrogenase enzyme, glycerol, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate produces 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Next, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate produces 3-phosphoglycerate with presence of phosphoglycerokinase enzyme and magnesium ion. Here, 1 ATP is produced. In next step, 3-phosphoglycerate is converted into 2-phosphoglycerate with presence of mutase enzyme. Then, this 2-phosphoglycerate is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate with presence of enolase enzyme. This phosphoenol pyruvate produces pyruvate with presence of pyruvate kinase and magnesium ion and producing 1 ATP. Well, we found 1 mole, 1 atom of dihydroxyacetone phosphate and 1 glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Here we can see this dehydroxyacetone phosphate can be converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So, following this pathway, this dihydroxyacetone phosphate can produce 1 pyruvate. In this way, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate produces 1 pyruvate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate produces 1 pyruvate. Up to this step, the pathway is for aerobic glycolysis. So, we can see one molecule of glucose produces 2 pyruvate in aerobic glycolysis, which we have told before. In anaerobic glycolysis, pyruvate produces lactate with the presence of lactate dehydrogenase. Here, one molecule of NAD2H is used, which was produced <coughs> in this step, where glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglyceraldehyde. Now, we will count the produced ATP both in aerobic glycolysis and anaerobic glycolysis. Here in this two step, ATP, 2 ATP is produced and here 1 NAD2H is produced. This NAD2H can produce 3 ATP in electron transport chain. So we can see one molecule of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate can produce 5 ATP. 
here as this dihydroxyacetyl phosphate follows this pathway and uh, it also makes 5 ATP so totally 10 ATP is produced in aerobic glycolysis but in first and third step we can see <coughs> 2 ATP is used so neat ATP production is 8 ATP in aerobic glycolysis on the other hand in anaerobic glycolysis this NAD2H is used so only 4 ATP is produced where in first and third step 2 ATP is used so need production in anaerobic glycolysis is 2 ATP now we will learn the importance of glycolysis it is the principal route for glucose oxidation to generate ATP it is also the pathway for fructose and galactose oxidation moreover it is the only metabolic pathway that can continue to provide ATP even in anaerobic state here in RBC anaerobic glycolysis takes place as RBC have no mitochondria so through anaerobic glycolysis RBC produces ATP which maintains biconcave shape of RBC mainly this produced ATP in RBC is used to maintain the activity of sodium potassium pump which pump maintains the shape of the RBC in RBC 2,3 BPG is produced by BPG shunt this 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate is required for hemoglobin to transport oxygen here comes the BPG shunt which takes place in RBC normally glucose produces 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate and this 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate produces 3 phosphoglycerate but in RBC through BPG shunt 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate produces 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate then 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate produces 3 phosphoglycerate and this 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate helps hemoglobin to carry or transport oxygen this was all about glycolysis hope you guys enjoyed this video please do like and share this video and stay tuned with calosambidi